Hey all, here's a video. I'm going to go over a couple different things. I've had a couple of requests for a video and I haven't done one of the V3 yet. So I just did a cleaning on this, a total tear down, and I'd been using it for quite a while and throwing in lots of oil. Um, and really in the bottom part here, there was kind of absolutely nothing. I just took a Q-tip with some ISO nothing made it down into the bottom which is great that's an improvement for sure the other parts this i did not even need to take apart i just soaked the whole thing in iso propyl alcohol and it's come out very clean and this does come apart if any oil does seep in between which it will eventually i'm sure but in this case it hadn't so i'm good nice and clean the 510 pin did not have any oil on it, didn't need to do anything to that. So it was uh, really easy to clean. I just swabbed the bottom, soaked the other parts here, and now I'm about to put it back together so everybody can see how that goes. So here's the base, one nice solid piece. You just take the insulator here, your other post, and get it get it in it's um can be a little tricky but look it's it's actually not that tricky so there it is put back together then you want to get that 510 pin with insulator back in it only goes one way let's see if i get it right the first time yeah it kind of hugs the Hugs the pin. We'll get that back in. Whoop. Okay. Gravity. The gravity of the situation. Hold it like that. You know, gravity. Or you can always put your finger right there. Okay, got a nice little screwdriver. Get that 510 pin nice and snug. There we go. Pretty easy. And get your dish back in. There. Very simple, very easy. I love how fast the tear down and cleanup is on that. I'd been really abusing this one with a radiator coil and it was, uh, you know, had some nice oil all over it and now it's come out nice and clean in like a couple minutes. It just took me literally a few minutes to clean it. Okay, so mesh was something that people were wondering about with the V3 and valid concern as the post holes are not huge, but I have fit the Tricor Juggernauts in. Here's one I've used um, you know quite a bit and cleaned up in isopropyl alcohol which is ready to go right back in the atomizer tricore juggernaut twisted timmies of course that's the way i roll this rda can take lots of different coil configurations so no worries there make sure i'm seated correctly and for this mesh i had an idea you could fold the mesh a few times make a little radiator there and uh, just kind of get it in the holes. I think that's going to work out pretty good. Might take a little bit of fitting and bending, but um, if you guys want to try out mesh, there's a way to do it. What I find is easy when installing coils with these post holes is just uh, taking your tool and your finger, get it started, And then take your tool to just to just get it all the way down and flush. Here's an example so you can see it. Get it in there. Take your tool and push the coil all the way all the way down. So there's an idea for people to try. You can fold mesh and see how that goes. But I'm going to reinstall this coil that I've already had in here, which was working amazingly well, of course. 
tricore juggernaut, one of the larger uh, coils. So all I do is I get it about there and take my jig or my screwdriver and just get it flush before I screw anything in. Jig or screwdriver, get it flush. You know, get your coil to where you probably want it to be sitting, right about there. And then the screws. Now they are pretty small, yes, they are. I like taking them out just because it's easy to do what I just did. Just get it started if you can. Even a teeny weeny weeny little bit and do the rest with your tool. There. So that one's in a nice little amount. Do the other one. Just get it in your hand. Get it started if possible. Or at least get it on there. You know, even just getting it on there can be good. Do the rest with the screwdriver. Make sure it's correct, of course. There, those are both heading in. I want to get the coil down a little more. Because with the V3, the airflow is really close to the insert and the coil. So it doesn't really matter if some wax gets into the holes. I, I was a little worried about that at first, but. I just kept going and it doesn't really cause any issues actually because there's an angle here so it doesn't actually come up into your mouth or anything like that. But my suggestion still is just ride the coil nice and low. You don't want it touching too much on the ceramic if possible, it takes away heat. I like to have it just hovering a little bit above and this is a fat coil. But what I like to do is have it about there. and then I'm going to screw it all the way in and this will be ready to go. Let's do that. And in a moment I'm going to quickly go over the settings on the box mod. I have a DNA 250C, the Odin, the two battery original Odin. I love it. The Odin Mini is probably my recommended choice for mods right now. Look at that. I have my glass adapter in the top cap. It fits in nice and snug. Look at my 12 uh, ply Frapel in there. We've got a new Frapel coming which is designed for the V3. It works perfect in the V2 as well, but it looks amazing. It looks really, really good. So Twisted Timmy's has a new Frapel coming out. There's the 12 ply in there, which does fit. I've been abusing this. As you can see, a bit of oil has gotten on the sides. It's not a problem whatsoever. No problem whatsoever. I've been using this for a week or two. No fluctuations in the resistance. That's the one thing about the V3. It's rock solid for weeks. Like It just doesn't change. So it's really great in that respect. So let's screw this one off. Let's get the new one on. There's a brand new trap with a coil I've already used for several weeks, then just rinsed in isopropyl alcohol and it's ready to go again. Now, box mod. What I've got is 430 in temperature control stainless steel mode. I've got a bit of a preheat on there. You don't need to, to necessarily do that. The most important things are getting your temperature set, getting your coil resistance locked at room temperature. This one is 0.13 and it's locked and setting your wattage. So this theme that I use is by Mr. Bottom Feeder on the Evolve forums. This is a really great firmware because you can see everything about the mod. So for example, 
I want to go into my stainless steel settings. One sec. Actually, the little bottom arrow here. Um, I can go into my profile right from the mod. And I can change things. I can change the watts. So what I've got for my temperature control is the stainless steel 316 setting. I've got 20 watts. I've got 430 Fahrenheit. I've got a 40 watt punch or preheat at 390 just to get the coil within I think it's a second or a fraction of a second up to up to um, temperature so these settings work perfectly for me and important thing also is to lock cold resistance on the coil so I haven't checked what the resistance on this one is yet let's do that another great thing about this um, firmware is you can lock and unlock the coil right from the mod you can't do that with the stock firmware from Evolve so here my old coil was 0.13 measure the new one is 0.319 yeah which sounds about right for this amount of of, um, of steel that's in there the amount of wraps on the coil so that's locked there's a little locking icon there that is locked now I'm going to go into wattage mode, not the replay one, I had a special one set up here. Yeah, I think that's it, 14 watts is usually about what I do. I'm going to just make sure it knows it's the right resistance here, I'm going to measure again. There, now that's that. I don't lock my wattage at all especially on a DNA mod, I don't think you need to. I just wanted to measure it real quick as I change settings. So now we've got 14 watts. I'm 0.32, uh, not locked, but I'm gonna fire that a little. There might be some residual isopropyl alcohol on there, but that's fine. Big old coil heating up, getting that isopropyl alcohol off of there. Let's go up in wattage a touch so we can see some glowing. Now you don't want to over glow stainless steel. It can actually damage it and um, might not be super safe. I usually recommend about 14 watts and then bumping it up to 20 watts, let's say, just to give it a few second pulsation at that wattage. I see some fresh colors coming in. And then I like to go up to about 28 watts and just give it a quick little blast very quick you don't want to go up into too high of a wattage with a dry coil see the colors coming back beautiful there this is a coil that I, there, right from the center no fuss no muss no poking no prodding you can squeeze together a little bit the coil with ceramic tweezers if it's not firing from the center but this one is because it's spaced nicely look at that so there you go. Now I'm all ready to go again with a coil I've already abused for several weeks. There you go guys. V3, some basic settings and things like that. Hope you enjoy. Stay way up there fam.